me I had a loud enough mouth, but I did still need to be mic'd. That's what you get, Greg. So I'll start over. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to First Christian Church here in Zanesville, Ohio. I am Pastor Laureen Rowe, and it is good to welcome you in the name of Jesus Christ, all of those worshiping here in the sanctuary, and all of those who are worshiping online. We have, as a county, returned to a high level of transmission of COVID. So we are highly recommending masks. They are not required, but we do highly recommend them. We continue in our worship series, Make a Joyful Noise. Today we are focusing on Amazing Grace as our song. And so you will be experiencing that song in lots of different ways today. Our VBS Jerusalem Marketplace this past week was a huge success. Lots of fun and great joy was in our midst all week. And next week you will be experiencing a video slideshow. I could not get it to upload for you today. So we will have it for you next week. Tuesday, this week, the deacons will be meeting at 7 p.m. If you're a deacon, please meet here in the sanctuary at 7 o'clock. And then on Thursday, our board will be meeting at 7 p.m. If you are one of the church officers or an elder or a ministry chairperson, we ask that you please be at the board meeting. And next Sunday, we will come to the baptismal waters with James McCandlish. And so we ask that everyone bring a little bit of water with them. There are vials out in the narthex on the coffee stand. And take that vial home. Fill it up with water from where you are. Water that nourishes you. Because baptism is not an individual event. It is an event by the community, with the community. And so you will be adding your water to the baptismal waters as we baptize James into the faith and into this community. Beginning in August, we are going to have Disciples History and Identity Month. Our children are going to go to Bethany Village Live at 9.30 on Sunday mornings. Hopefully the weather will cooperate and they'll be able to have that down at Spangler Memorial in the shelter area and experience the Disciples on the Frontier. At that same time, at 9.30 on Sunday mornings, I will be leading a Sunday school class for youth and adults in the chapel on our disciples' history and identity. Worship will also focus on those where we will look at our identity and who we are as disciples. Gracious Givers this month is collecting sandwich zip bags for Christ's table. Those are used to share food with those in need. And speaking of Christ's table, we serve there this coming Saturday. So please examine your heart and see if this is some way that you are being called to serve God's people and sign up on the sign-up board in the narthex. Those are all of our announcements. Now let us begin worship with our prelude.
Good morning. Welcome to First Christian Church. Please stand as you are able for the call to worship. Amazing grace here for us. Amazing grace, surrounding us with hope. Amazing grace, filling us with joy. Amazing grace, empowering us over fear. Amazing grace, freely and lovingly given to us today and always. Please join in singing our focus song for today, Amazing Grace, Page 546, or I'm assuming on the screen. <clears throat> Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. But now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. T'was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. The hour I first believed Through many dangers, toils, and snares I have already come Tis grace hath taught me save the far and grace will lead me home when we've been there ten thousand years bright shining as the sun we've no less days to sing praise than when we first begun. Let us pray. Eternal giver of grace, you come into our worship to welcome us back to you. May we here experience the good news of your radical forgiveness so that we are moved to extraordinary acts of discipleship, all for the sake of your Son, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Come and find the quiet center in the crowded life we lead. Find the room for hope to enter. Find the frame where we are free. Clear the chaos and the clutter. Clear our eyes that we can see all the things that really matter. Be at peace and simply be. 
may be seated. Our first scripture is portions of Psalm 103. Hear the word of the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good as long as you live so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. But the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him and his righteousness to children's children, to those who keep his covenant and remember to do his commandments. The Lord has established his throne in the heavens and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, O you, his angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding, obedient to his spoken word. Bless the Lord, all the hosts, his ministers that do his will. Bless the Lord, all his works, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. This is the word of life. Thank you. I would like to invite our children to come forward for our children's moment. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Good morning. It's good to have you here today. Today we are singing the song Amazing Grace. And so I thought I'd ask, do you know what it means, grace? Well, let's start with amazing. What does it mean to be amazing? Spectacular, great. It's above and beyond, right? It's amazing. So then we get to the word grace. And what does grace mean? Beauty. You know, sometimes we say we're going to say grace before a meal, and so it could be a prayer. But in the sense of God's grace, it is that love of God, that forgiveness we get when we do wrong. Grace is a love that is there for us that we don't do a single thing to earn. It's just there. It's right there to scoop up all the time. So do you ever have days where you're feeling kind of low on yourself? Maybe you messed up. Not that this would be you, but sometimes I would get bad grades on a test, and I would beat myself up. Anybody out there do that? (laughs) Yeah, and I would just be feeling horrible about myself. We don't need to do that. Because God's grace, no matter what happens to us, that grace is always there. It's a love that covers up that bad test. It's the love that covers up a mean word we may say. We just have to ask, Lord, let your grace cover me. And that love is there. It's soup all around you. You're swimming in it in each and every moment. It is something that God provides for all of us. Let's all say together, grace is now. Can you all say that with me? One, two, three. 
Grace is now. It is everywhere. It is right with us. Let us pray. Oh God, we give thanks for your grace that covers us, that loves us and cares for us. I ask that that grace pour over the young people who sit before you this morning and the ones who are not here. All your children need to experience your grace as they navigate this world. We pray this in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Will you join me in prayer? Accept our lives, O oh Lord, as well as our gifts. Let this spirit in which we give them be your spirit. Let the use that is made of them be your use. Amen. Amen. This week during Vacation Bible School, our children collected money. Each day they were invited to bring an offering and they put it in a great big pencil. And in that pencil, dollars collected. And they were raising money for Operation Kid to Kid. And this year's focus was to buy school supplies for children who live on Native American reservations. So many of those children live without and they should not live without the basic needs to go to school. So our children raised $122, am I remembering right, Kim? $122 for the children to have school supplies. Now with the power of Operation Kid to Kid, gathering children from all over the place to give to this, they have purchasing power. So that purchasing power only there, only one dollar is needed for school supplies for a whole year. So our children were able to raise enough money to provide school supplies for 122 children. If you want to add to that, there is, is it a basket out there? A bowl with something marked on it, Operation Kid to Kid. When you leave, you can place some of your money in there to add to our children's collection and let them see it go to abundance. I encourage you to do so. Thank you, amen. One of the blessings of being in a church family is that we experience community everywhere we go. And when one of us moves on to the great church in heaven, we feel that loss. Memorial gifts are given in order for things to be purchased to continue to remember that life, but also to share in the beauty of this church family. Cecilia Celia Miller was an important part of this congregation. And her family is with us this morning. It's so nice to have you all here today. Celia was a lifelong member of this congregation. Her parents came here as well. And her Sunday school class, the Pears and Spares, out of their deep love for her and her family, they purchased rose bushes for our peace garden. And those were planted earlier this spring in her memory and in her honor to celebrate the beautiful spirit that she remains with us. And so today we dedicate those roses in her memory and we allow that joy and that beauty of her spirit to swell in our midst. And as those roses bloom each year, we remember her life and all that she means to those of us here. Let us pray a prayer of dedication. God of the living and the dead, help us to honor the 
life and hope and courage of Celia Miller. Remember past times and relationships with Celia now gone from us, but the love that continues. Today, Lord, we dedicate these roses to her memory. We honor the life she continues to give us as we retell her story in our congregation, our families, our community. These roses are signs of remembrance, but we also dedicate them as signs of hope. As each flower blooms, we are reminded of the eternal life Celia now enjoys with you and your son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. We give thanks for the love in which these roses were planted and the love of Celia that they represent. Thanks be to God. The Lord has promised good to me. His word my hope secures. He will my shield and portion be as long as life endures. My chains are gone. I've been set free. My God, my Savior, has ransomed me. And like a flood, his mercy reigns. Unending love, amazing grace. My chains are gone. I've been set free. My God, my Savior, has ransomed me. And like a flood, his mercy reigns. Unending love, amazing grace. The earth shall soon dissolve. Like snow, the sun forbear to shine. But God, who called me here below, will be forever mine.
thank you for sharing your soul with us today. As we move into our time of prayer, I ask that you keep the following in your prayer list this week. Brian Cooper is home following his heart surgery at the Cleveland Clinic. He texted me early this morning to make sure I express to all of you his appreciation and gratitude for all the love, all the prayers, all the extensions of kindness that you have shown him during this time. He's got a long road of recovery and he knows that he's being cared for by this congregation and he gives his great thanks for that. Connie Coleman had successful surgery this week and she is home recovering. Jason asks for prayers for his mother Ella and prayers of sympathy for the family of Dennis McLaughlin who began his eternal life on Wednesday. Mary Arnold is at Camp Christian this week. She is director of CYF conference for high school students. So please keep Mary and all those young people in your prayers. And we have a big joy this morning. Peggy Gordon called me on Thursday and she was just overjoyed at it exclaiming loudly, no chemo, no radiation. And so she got really good reports from the doctors. And so she is well on her way to recovery. And we give thanks to God for no chemo, no radiation. Let us join our hearts as one and come before the Lord. Oh God, you are almighty. You are our redeemer and your grace is never ending and the embodiment of love itself. When we come to you in prayer, sometimes we trip up. Sometimes we don't know what to say, but your grace covers us and your Holy Spirit brings our hearts and our lives to you. Here are those that are coming to you now. Lord, as we look out into the world, we see violence, we see natural disasters, but we also see your love in action. We see friend reaching out to friend, stranger reaching out to stranger, hearts reaching out to hearts, caring for one another as you have called us to do. So, Lord, we come to you this day and we give thanks for those small acts of kindness that cause great ripples in the lives of another. We give thanks for the opportunities that you lay before us to grow in your spirit. And, Lord, we give thanks for the great cloud of witnesses that surrounds us in each and every moment that is your grace flowing from heaven over us, showing us, teaching us. Oh Lord God, thank you for each and every person who is gathered here today in worship. Unite us as your community. Allow your spirit to weave between each of us so that we can grow stronger in the name of Jesus Christ. So we can be strong a brighter light in the name of Jesus Christ so we can be your community in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh Lord, we pray all this with all the love that we have within ourselves in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. As we prepare to receive communion, that greatest gift of grace ever given, let us sing together according to thy gracious word, number 402. According to thy gracious word, in me humility, this will I do. My dying Lord, I will remember thee. 
and for my sake my bread from heaven will be thy testament O cup I take and thus remember thee when to the cross I turn my eyes and rest on Calvary O Lamb of God my sacrifice I must remember thee I shall remember all my pain and all thy love to me when thou shalt come again and reign Jesus remember me grace I think of the grace that Jesus showed when he gave his life and as we gather each week around this table we enter in to a moment of grace a moment of grace for us a moment when we can let go of all that that's bogging us down all that that we see in ourselves as imperfect and weakness we can lay it down here and receive that grace and be filled and be full jesus on the night that he was betrayed was surrounded with his disciples and he wanted them to know that his life was for them and for us and so he took a loaf of bread and he blessed it and then he broke it and he said this is my body which is broken for you take and eat in remembrance of me and then he took a cup and he gave thanks for it and he said this is my blood which is shed for each of you take and drink in remembrance of me let us pray Also, that thy admonition to us to reach out and feed thy sheep. May we continually, every day, reach out for needs of thy fellow man. We ask this in his name. Amen. Amen. As one in Christ, let us eat of the bread of life. And as children of God, let us drink from the cup of salvation. Amen. That happens. Our second scripture today comes from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, almost at the very end. And here we experience and hear him talking about grace. He doesn't use that word, but listen for where the grace is. I'm reading verses 6 through 10 in the 12th chapter. But if I wish to boast, I will not be a fool for I will be speaking the truth, but I refrain from it, so that no one may think better of me than what is seen in me or heard from me, even considering the exceptional character of the revelations. Therefore, to keep me from being too elated, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I appealed to the Lord about this, that it would leave me, but he said to me, 
My grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. So I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. May God add blessing and understanding to the reading of the word. Amazing grace. My earliest memory of this song is from when I attended Cairo camp at Camp Christian. Amazing grace was played over the PA system as our signal it was time to go to sleep. When I was in marching band during high school, my girlfriends and I made up a song called Amazing Chickens to the tune. Yes, you can chuckle. It was meant to be funny. We would sing it with great gusto on the bus rides home from band competitions. And yes, I still know the song. But no, I am not going to sing it for you here this morning. Since becoming a minister, I have sung Amazing Grace at countless funerals, and I have found that it is always requested at hymn sings. It is a song that has a powerful impact on people and their faith. It has a rich history, and it has a profound effect on people. So I created a little video for us this morning to give us insight into the history and the staying power of this song. Greg's going to make the magic happen. Amazing Grace, written by John Newton. John Newton was a slave trader. He trafficked thousands of men, women, and children from Africa to the auction blocks. In 1748, a violent storm threatened to sink his ship. He fell to his knees and prayed to God for mercy. That night, John Newton sensed that there is a God who hears and answers prayers, even for the worst of men. Over time, Newton repented and became a preacher and writer of hymns in 1772, Newton wrote a hymn called Faith's Review and Expectation, a song you know as Amazing Grace. It became perhaps the most popular song in history, a song that with a few notes lifts the heads of the hopeless, softens the hearts of the hardened. Amazing Grace was sung by both sides of the Civil War and used as a requiem by the Cherokee on the Trail of Tears. Civil rights protesters sang it defiantly during freedom marches and on that sweltering August day when Dr. King shared a dream. Amazing grace rang out when Nelson Mandela was freed from prison and when the Berlin Wall came crumbling down. And on September 11, 2001, Amazing Grace was sung to comfort a mourning country. Grace has the power to transform, to right the wrongs, and to turn a man who once traded slaves into one who fought for their freedom. Amazing grace has power. There's something about the tune, the words that weave together that bring about 
a peace for our spirits. Which of the verses stands out to you? Which is the one that causes your heart and spirit to swell? For me, it's verse 3. Tis grace hath brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. The promise of God's goodness and grace is what pulls me through the difficult and dark places in life. While John Newton did not use one particular scripture for writing this hymn, the theme of God's grace is found throughout the scriptures. And I selected Psalm 103 and 2 Corinthians 12 as our focus today. Psalm 103 opens with words that paint a beautiful image and definition of God's grace. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquity? Who heals all your diseases? Who redeems your life from the pit? Who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy? Who satisfies you with good as long as you live so that your worth is renewed like the eagles? And then in verse 17, we see God's power illustrated. God's grace is laid out for us in these words. The steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. The image of everlasting to everlasting bursts forth burst forth from this psalm declaring that there is never a point in time when God's steadfast love, God's forgiveness, God's redemption, God's salvation, God's grace. There is never a point in time when God's grace is taken away. It is always there, everlasting to everlasting. And in 2 Corinthians, we hear from Paul who tells us that he refrains from boasting so that God can be seen through him. He also tells us that three times he has asked the Lord to remove the thorn from his side, and God's response was this, My grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. So I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. Paul is stating in this text that most people would gladly boast about their strengths their assets, the things that make them beautiful, attractive, a highly valued employee, and a skilled worker. And then Paul shares that we are to be content in our weaknesses. How many of us are content in our weaknesses? We want to hide them. Like earlier when I said to you, grace is not used in this text, I was remembering 103, Psalm 103, but said it at 2 Corinthians, where grace is clearly mentioned. That was a weakness this morning. It's not something I want to boast or point out, but there it was. How many of us want to shout about those things and make that our calling card to people? Not really, but that's what Paul is telling us to do. Paul is saying that if we do this, God's grace shines through us. But I don't recommend that that's how we present ourselves to people with our calling, with calling card being all of our weaknesses. But Paul is saying we would be far better off if we talked about our weaknesses and how God works through them rather than boasting about all that we have accomplished. God's grace will cover our weaknesses. God will strengthen us and fill the gaps where we have shortcomings. And then, when God does, God's grace can be seen by all people. John Newton, the author of Amazing Grace, was the captain of a slave transport ship. He transported people from Africa to England where they were sold into slavery. Upon an encounter with a soul-saving storm, Newton repented and became a cleric or minister of the word. 
the chalice worship companion states, after preaching into his 80th year, Newton died in 1807 and was buried in his churchyard. His epitaph reads, John Newton, clerk, once an infidel and libertine, a servant of slaves in Africa, was by the rich mercy of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, preserved, restored, pardoned, and appointed to preach the faith he labored long to destroy. It was through his weakness, through his mistake of being a captain of a slave ship, that God was able to shine and redeem him. Grace is not something we receive upon death. Grace is now. God's grace is poured into our lives within each and every moment. All we have to do is be open to it. Remember the words of the psalmist, God's grace is the steadfast love of the Lord that is from everlasting to everlasting. There is no beginning. There is no end to God's grace. And we don't have to do anything to earn it. All we have to do is be open to receiving it. That's the power of our free will and the beauty of being in a relationship with God. We're not forced. We're invited to receive God's grace. So often we beat ourselves up due to our weaknesses. And we forget about God's grace. We spiral down with self-deprecating thoughts, worries about not being good enough, and guilt over mistakes we have made. If this is where you are in your journey right now, please take a moment and acknowledge that God's grace is for you right now. You don't have to wait until worship is over. You don't have to wait until everything is aligned and perfect. God's grace is here now for you, for me, for all who will receive it. And that, my friends, is what is truly amazing about God's grace. Let us pray. Oh, holy God, thank you so much for your grace. Pour it over us now in this moment and wash away all that we see that is wrong. Allow us to see ourselves through your eyes. Allow us to see each other through your eyes. And let us walk out into the world able to see others covered in your grace. We pray this in your son Jesus Christ's name. Amen. If you would like to make a confession of faith and allow God's grace to just enter into your life in a new and more profound way, you're invited to come forward as we stand and sing the church's one foundation, number 272. The church's one foundation is Jesus Christ our Lord. We are his new creation by water and the word. From heaven he came and sought us to be. With his own blood he bought us, and for our life he died. Called forth from every nation, yet one o'er all the earth. Our charter of salvation, one Lord, one faith, one birth. One holy name professing and at his table fed to one hope always pressing by own life your led. O oh Lord, send us out now.
filled with your spirit, redeemed by your grace to go out and be your light and to be your church. Amen.